video is going to deal with significant figures. And we don't really use significant figures in our daily lives. However, you are appreciative that someone bothered to use them. For example, when you buy medication, you're very glad that someone at a factory somewhere measured things very accurately and very precisely. Let's talk about some for instances in your life. When you go to the bathroom scale at home and you weigh 145 pounds, well, you're not really concerned if you weigh 145.2986432 pounds. You're concerned if you weigh 140 or 141 or 142 or 138. You're concerned maybe a pound, a pound and a half. That's what you're concerned with. However, if I was going to Mars, I want to know how many pounds I was bringing, not just how many pounds. We wouldn't be using pounds. We'd be using grams or kilograms. You wouldn't know, want to know just kilograms. You want to know micro kilograms, like 0 0.000004. Okay, you want to know to that degree of accuracy. What if you were an intensive care nurse and you were weighing babies? You would want to know if they weighed eight ounces, 8.02 ounces, or 8.03 ounces, not just eight ounces or nine ounces, but you want to know to a greater degree of precision and accuracy. Just like if I had my kitchen cabinets, right? And a storm happened at my house. Well, what if a storm happened and I needed to replace some of these cabinets? Not all of them, but some of them. If you look, these cabinets right here, this set of cabinets, there's actually room. There's a wall here. You see that? So if this cabinet got damaged by a tree, I could actually order that it a little bit narrower or a little bit wider. It wouldn't make that much of a difference because I have some play here. Okay? Now, what about this cabinet here? If that got damaged, I would have to really measure my cabinet and really get something that fit. Because I've got my window here. I've got this cabinet edge here, which actually lays on the cabinet on the bottom. And so I'd have to be very careful about how I ordered a cabinet for this section and actually measure it to a great degree of accuracy and precision. Same for this cabinet over the refrigerator. I can get one that's a little bit shorter not too much though, it's going to look funny and it's not going to fit right, but I sure can't get one that's longer because it goes to the edge, okay? So let's talk about significant figures, and significant figures have to do with zeros in numbers. And you probably really haven't thought about this before, but there are actually three types of zeros. There are leading zeros captive zeros and trailing zeros. And let's see what blue looks like here. That looks good. So leading zeros are in the front of a number. Captive zeros are trapped between two numbers. And trailing zeros are at the end of numbers. And there's two instances. There's one where my number has no decimal, and there's one where my number has decimals involved when they're at the end. Leading zeros never count. So if you ever see zeros in front of a number, you look at this first set of, num of this first number here, 0 0.002, those zeros are out front. All they are is placeholders saying, hey, you have a really tiny number. You're going to pick up your pen and you're going to cross them off. And how many numbers do you actually see here? I see one. And so we're going to say that that is the only significant figure. And so in this very first example, I have one significant figure, the number two. That is my one number that means something to me. Now, so when do they count? They never count. And we'll go over this again in a second with some more examples. Captive zeros always count. This 206 jelly beans I have in my bag in front of me means I counted 200 and then I went past it to the number and including number 6. So a total of 206 jelly beans, they all mean something to me. So that means that all those numbers mean something and that zero always counts. So captive zeros, the zero always counts. And so if you count your places, what do you have? You have 2, that's 1. 0, that's a second number. 
and six, that's the third number. So in this second example, I have three significant figures. Now what about trailing zeros? Well, look at this example right here. If I told you that about 100 kids walk by my room in the past 20 minutes, is that 100 exactly? It could mean I had 55 students walk by my room, or 140. Those numbers both round to 100. But you didn't ask me like if I was buying shirts for somebody. You said about how many kids walk by your door. And I said about 100. So these zeros at the end do not count because there is no decimal that's written right here. Do you see a decimal that's written right here? I do not. Okay. So in this case, these zeros do not count and the only number that means something is this. And so in the first example here, I have one significant figure, that one, because that number can be 55 or 140. Now let's look at this 400.0. There are trailing zeros there. How do I know they're trailing? Because they're at the end of my number. Is there a decimal? Say yes. And since there is a decimal, those zeros count. So how many places do you see? I see the four, I see the zero, the zero, and the other zero. That is four significant figures. Let's try some more examples. What kind of zeros are leading zeros again? There's zeros out front. So there's this example and this example. Do the zeros count in this first number? No, they do not. They're leading. They're out in front. How many numbers do you physically see? I see one. And so therefore, in this first example, there's only one significant figure. What kind of zero is in this second number? It's a leading zero. These never count. How many numbers do you physically see here? I see one and two. So it's a total of two significant figures. Those zeros are simply there to say, hey, you have a small number. Watch out. Captive zeros always count. And so captive zeros are trapped between two numbers. They could be trapped like this, or they could be trapped like this. Those are both trapped between numbers, whole numbers. How many number places do you see in this first one? One, two, three, four, including those zeros. So I have four significant figures. How many do you see here? One, two, three, and so in this second example, there are three significant figures. Those numbers all mean something. Trailing zeros are at the end of a number, and it depends only with a decimal. That's when they count. So let's try this. Three, zero, zero. And that decimal means exactly. Let's write some examples for you here. All right, so what about this first example? Is there any decimal present? No, there's not. What kind of zeros are there? Those are trailing. I cross them off and I only see one number so there's one significant figure here. If you could look at this last three examples right here, they all have decimals, don't they? And they all have zeros that are trailing. How do you know that? Oh, they're at the end of a the number. They do count. So in this case, I have three significant figures. One, two, three places. How many do I have in this next example? If you said four, you're correct. One, two, three, four. What about this last example? If you said one, two, three, four, five, you are correct also. And someone would say, well, hey, Failey, aren't these three numbers the same right here? Isn't 300 the same as 300 point, the same as 300 point zero? In other words, aren't these numbers all the same? And I would say, no, they're not. The first one is around 300. The second one is 300 exactly. And the last one is even more specific. It's 300.0, okay? It's even more accurate. So what are our three kinds of zeros? Leading, captive, and trailing. Leading zeros never count, 
in your life, they never count. Captive zeros always count. And what about trailing? Only with a decimal. So I'm going to write some examples here. And as I put them up here, you can go ahead and try and tell me how many significant figures there are. And look at what kind of zeros there are. You can pause this if you'd like to. Alrighty? So let's look at the first example, number one. What kind of zeros? Those are trailing. They don't count because there's no decimal. So I have one significant figure. Number two, what kind of zero is it? It's a trapped or captive zero. So all four of those numbers mean something, right? So there's four significant figures. What kind of, and I should actually put, let me do this right here. I'll put a decimal here. Okay, sorry if you already did it. What kind of zeros are those? Those are trailing. However, there's a decimal. So those four numbers, one, two, zero, zero, all mean something, four significant figures. What about number four? What kind of zeros are these? Oh, look, they're leading. They never count. So I only have one significant figure. What kind of zeros are there in number five? Oh, there's all three. There's leading. Those do not count. This is captive, so it does count. This is trailing, isn't it? Is there a decimal in the number? There sure is. So indeed it does count, and there are four significant figures. What about number six? Leading zeros? Nope. Captive zeros? Yep. Trailing zero? Yes, indeed. And there is a decimal, so it counts. So four significant figures.